So it's taken a little longer than I would have liked, but here is my um, most recent wrap up. I hope you're doing really well. I had an absolutely crazy start to the year, so um, everything is a bit late. All of my videos that I had planned are late. Um, it's just, yeah, it's been it's been quite a lot. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just get into um, a few reviews of some of the books that I've read. I have four books here that I'm going to talk about, and um, yeah, let's just let's just crack on with them. So the first one that I'm going to talk about is this one. This is Evie's Ghost by Helen Peters and this is sort of a mid-grade slash YA book and um, I read this with my daughter and we read it at the very back end of the year and um, this was really fantastic. I think I enjoyed it more than she did to be honest. I think she might have been a little bit too young. She's only eight and I do think that some of the themes in this were a little bit too mature for her to understand. Um, however overall I thought it was a fantastic book. So this story follows Evie who is um, a little bit miffed. I'm not sure if it tells you in the book exactly how old she is. It was a little while ago since I read this. It was a few weeks back. Um, but in my head she's about 12-13 years old. So we're just gonna go with that. Anyway, she is really upset about the fact that her mum is getting remarried and is off on a honeymoon. And Evie gets shipped off to her aunt's house while her mum's off on this honeymoon and she is absolutely livid. And this aunt lives in a huge sort of old Victorian style mansion which is now being converted into flats. So upon arrival Evie is pretty annoyed to find out that her aunt is just not very domestic at all and isn't really going to be looking after her, there's just no food in the fridge or anything like that. So when she goes to bed in a bit of a huff she wakes up and it is now 1814 outside. So she's gone from modern day into 1814 and um, she's suddenly a housemaid in the same house that she was living in with her aunt but instead of it being all converted it's now back to the original house. And Evie's on a bit of a mission. She has been sent back in time basically to stop the girl of the house, Sophia Fane, from being locked up for the rest of her life and having an illegitimate child killed, I believe. Um, so that's what I'm saying, it was a little bit more heavy than I thought it was going to be, but it, overall we really enjoyed it together. And I just thought it was a really interesting concept and it provided a little bit of insight into what life was like as a young person back in the 1800s. I think the added historical element really stuck with my daughter and for that reason I'd recommend it for anybody who either loves a bit of sort of middle grade fiction or um, anybody who has children around a similar age. The next book that I read was A Christmas One and it's this one. It's Jenny Colgan's The Christmas Bookshop. Now for the last few years it hasn't been Christmas for me without a Jenny Colgan book and um, I, this was no exception. This book follows, what was her name? That's a good start isn't it? What's her name? Carmen. So Carmen has a, a bit of a free and easy life, shall we say. She's sort of living a best single life and she spends a lot of time with her friends. And she works in a department store and she quite enjoys her job. However, she's made redundant because, you know, closures. And she ends up having to go stay with her perfect sister in Edinburgh. Now her sister is a little bit older than her, but her sister lives in an absolutely beautiful house in central Edinburgh. And um, she has three children that Carmen doesn't really know how to connect with. And um, a sister is also pregnant, which doesn't help matters at all. So Carmen goes to move in with her sister to help out in the house. And um, the two sisters have a somewhat strained relationship. Carmen's sister gets her a job helping in an old bookshop in Edinburgh's old town. And having spent a lot of time in Edinburgh, I used to live quite close to Edinburgh, um, I could really picture all of the streets and all the different places that are mentioned and it was just, it was a perfect Christmassy read for me. I very much enjoyed it. There is a course, as there often is in these sort of romantic Christmas style books, there is an element of a romance building, um, but personally for me that took sort of back seat to the rest of the story, which was family ties and, um, basically letting go of family feuds. It's very heartwarming and very easy to read for the Christmas. The next book that I've got is a book that I had to find second hand because it appears to be out of print. I couldn't find it anywhere. So I picked it up a while ago after a recommendation from Aoife from Words of Clover and it is this one. It is Ordeal by Linda Lovelace. Now, I'm sure many of you will have heard of Linda Lovelace and you might know the film that she was famous for. If you don't, Google it. However, the film that made her famous was actually made during a period of extreme abuse and this story tells the true story of Linda Lovelace in her own words. 
I will say I can kind of see why it might be out of print because there are a few things that raise a few eyebrows in this. Um, and I'm not talking about the abuse because that was horrific. I'm talking about there were some some things, some things in here that made me uncomfortable in the terminology used and um, yeah, I mean that's all I'm going to say, go into this expecting that. Um, but also, this is a story that deserves to be told. This is the story of a young girl, Linda Lovelace, who met a boy who seemed like he was going to give the world and um, instead he sort of took her and put her into forced sex slavery and just some of the things that happened in this book I hadn't even imagined. I watch a lot of true crime. I listen to true crime all the time. And even some of the things that were mentioned in this, I could not have imagined. I couldn't have, I just, I just couldn't have imagined them happening. At times that I was just sat with my hand over my mouth, just like gripping my face as I read it because it was just so horrific. And my husband was like, just sort of side-eyeing me, like wondering what, whether I was having a breakdown. Almost was. This is awful. And the fact that Linda Lovelace has managed to go on and get out of this situation and managed to create a whole different life for herself. I do believe she's passed away now, but at the time of writing this, she'd created a whole new life for herself. And just, just reading about it, it's absolutely eye-opening. So this has heavy themes of of, uh, of everything. I mean, if you can imagine it, it's probably in this book. It's horrific, but it's a story that I think deserves to be told. And um, yeah, if you can get hold of a copy of this, I really recommend it. And the final book that I've got is this one. This is Something More Than Night by Kim Newman. Now this is probably one of the most difficult books to review. And this is a very complicated book to review without giving away a lot of of the story and, and what's happening. Just bear with me. I should also mention that this was sent to me for review and it was sort of sold to me as a bit of a crime thriller. However, however, upon reading it, it seems to be just completely genre bending. It does have crime elements. It does have horror elements. It does have a little bit of a thrill going on, but it also has a huge just mashup of, of other things in it. But it's also a huge mashup of of real people versus fictional people, all the while set in 1930s Hollywood with so many references to 1930s cinema that if you have not watched many 1930s old sort of horror movies, you might not get a lot of the references that are in this book. As it happens, I have watched a lot of 1930s horror movies. That was actually how I spent my Sundays as a child. I don't know if anybody remembers, but back in the day when I was a child, on Sunday mornings there used to be a section on TV, I believe it was Channel 4, would play old Hollywood movies and um, I can remember watching The Mummy and Frankenstein's Monster and um, yeah, all of those just sat in my living room on a Sunday morning. In this book we're following Raymond Chandler who writes detective stories for a pulp magazine. However, however, his old friend Boris Karloff, which is his actor name, his real name is William or Billy, um, his old friend Boris, or as the book tends to call him, Billy, is an actor in old 1930s Hollywood. And when Billy comes to Raymond with a mystery that needs solving, the two of them just go at it. It's burned out detective meets Hollywood noir and it took me a little while to get into the writing style of this because it is quite fantastical. There are elements of history, there are elements of the supernatural, there are elements of um, the dark side of Hollywood. There's just so many different things going on in this book that the mashup can be a little bit crazy but also quite Moorish. And once I got into the writing style and sort of gathered what was going on, I really did enjoy this one. This is my first Kim Newman book. This is my first Kim Newman book, but it might not be my last. So there we go. Those are the books that I've read recently. I have some more that I'm halfway through. I'm halfway through two other books, and um, so I'll be back soon with some more reviews. But as usual, let me know if you've read any of these. Let me know if you're going to, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now.